So, hello. Uh, this is the lecture about the anatomy of disaster. And um, to start, I would like to um, explain to you the premise of the lecture because I decided to limit it in certain ways so it doesn't get too long, but also it has certain things that it revolves around. So, uh, the main idea here is to make this kind of overview and analysis of natural disasters uh, in mangas, how they are presented, how uh, the whole thing plays out on the uh, event level, of the, uh, also on psychological level, on development level of characters, and a lot of other things. So, um, starting from the beginning, uh, I would like to underline that I will have to spoil some of the titles I will be talking about. I'm trying to do it minimal, but analyzing a manga without revealing anything from the plot is really hard. Um, I'm only going to go through nine titles here because it's only a short one hour lecture, actually shorter than that. Uh, but I would like to be fair from the beginning, uh, that nobody warned you, of course I did. Uh, but uh, the mangas I'm going to present by and large are really good titles. So reading them, even if you know a little bit from the plot, is still worth it. Uh, so I recommend like 90% of them. There's like one or two that were semi, but most of it is really good. So to explain the plan of the panel, why are there disaster, natural disasters in mangas? Um, that's, that's just the first to, to set the stage for you to get into the feeling of, of why are we even thinking about them. Then we will take the big star, the earthquakes, very known in Japan, and uh, we will see them as key events and also as side events. And then they, we will move to having the epidemics and pandemics, so viruses, all of that stuff, very interesting. Uh, and evolution, because humans are like perfectly dead end, so we're gonna see what happens when, when humans have to fight against nature again. And then I will do a small summary of what we've learned in this lecture. So, uh, why do we even try very bloody disastrous events in the mangas? I found uh, from, from a comic by Calvin, uh, from Calvin and Hobbles, um, for those of you who don't know, uh, ah. this young fellow is Calvin and he's pretending to be his own father, saying that do something you hate, miserable builds character. And with natural disasters, it's actually pretty much like that. The characters go through very, very miserable conditions and very miserable events in life. And this builds character. Of course, it can also be lost love in high school, uh, but if it falls under your, on your head or something and there's fire everywhere, it's even more interesting, right? So, with this premise, let's go to earthquakes. And this is about the disaster as it unfolds, as people are trying to go through it and get out of it. So, the titles that basically revolve around the idea of an earthquake. And a classic example, very good manga, is 51 Ways to Protect My Girlfriend from 2006. And this manga is about two people who meet each other after a long time of not seeing each other. And that's Odaiba, it's the artificial island that's connected with Tokyo by a bridge. And the earthquake strikes 8.0 in the Richter scale, very strong earthquake. The ground splits open, the buildings fall, there is fire, wounded people everywhere. Very, very strong manga. And I was wondering about it, this is a second title that I meet where, where the start is from Odaiba. Why is it that Odaiba is so popular for people going to when there is an earthquake coming? And I actually checked it, uh, so we have uh, I, I couldn't find an exactly 8.0 at Odaiba happening, but the Toho earthquake of 2011, this was the Fukushima earthquake, so there was a lot of casualties, a lot of tragedy happening, but it was far away, so on the map uh, you have 
a nice point to show where Odaiba is. This is Tokyo. The point is pretty big compared to the size of the island, but uh, just to show you the Odaiba itself had about five to five plus uh, in the Richter scale, and the things happening there was 30 centimeters of liquefying sand, dislodging manholes, cracked and uneven pavements, leaning fences and walls. This is five. The manga goes into eight. So uh, if we take this premise, the, the idea of um, you know, big holes in the ground, buildings falling, a lot of fire going on. Odaiba is basically a trap if you ever get into an earthquake, trying not to be on an artificial island. The bridge just starts falling apart, people are panicking, it's very hard to get out of there to safety. So, uh, and, and that manga doesn't even include the tsunami, that would be afterwards not fun. And the, the only thing that saves most people in, in Odaiba is that the earthquakes are usually there, not exactly here, with, with the higher number. And with that, uh, let's see what the manga does. It goes not only through the earthquake, but also through the destruction, the fires. Uh, the society, of course, falls apart, there are riots, chaos, violence and crime, and this goes really gritty and really violent in moments. Uh, the characters go through a lot of pain. And with, with that as well, they are still having this kind of moments in the manga where they are going from extreme depression and horrible things to thinking about what they will do when they get out of it. Uh, when they uh, can go to school again, to work again, when they can get married, have children. Uh, so the manga is trying really hard to have this beacon of hope uh, suspended over your heads and, and thinking about it, trying to go through really horrible things. And the protagonists really grow, that being miserable in here really sharpens their character. Of course there are also characters there that, that fall apart, that cannot make it, suicides, murders, theft, a lot of things. And even there, there is love stories, there is a lot of interesting, so this is a very condensed manga with a lot of feelings in them. And what's really interesting uh, at the bottom line here is that the author really like digs out uh, historical events and even some studies that uh, explain why this thing is happening, uh, that this has happened before. So it shows that the manga is also going very deep into trying to be as realistic as possible. So if you would say that you don't really like uh, reading books or reading news, that would be like the closest you can get to this kind of very digestible, factographic way of describing of what a really tragical earthquake could look like. Uh, and in this way, it's really interesting read. Now, uh, the closest what I found was actually not in manga. Uh, this is, I'm trying to hold here to mangas, but Tokyo Magnitude 8.0 is an anime that is basically very close to it. Uh, there is similar realism. Uh, the difference is that they, they also start from Odaiba, perfect place. And uh, it's a sibling story that also goes for all the things Probably because it's on the screen, it's, there is not as much violence and horrible crimes. Uh, but if you like anime, that's a really good title to go, uh, and it follows our topic. But now, let's see what happens when the earthquake is not the main event, it's not the main character. I saw that this is a kind of a theme that earthquake is used as a kind of messenger. The manga starts, there's this tension of feeling that something is wrong, something will happen and it will be horrible, and everything will be different, and earthquake is the beginning of it. It shakes everyone, it causes distress, everybody's scared, and suddenly the earth is different, you are in some completely different world. And this happened in quite a few titles, and I found two that are spaced in time. Drifting, Drifting Classroom from 1972, is a very old title and it starts with basically 
a whole school going for an earthquake and then being transported into a different world. So you have here the earthquake itself with all the children in the class and then looking outside of the window at the new world they were transported to. I will not tell you what the world was, uh, but the earthquake itself didn't destroy that much. So the windows were intact, people weren't really that hurt, but the quakes and tremors were that thing where the transportation happened and, and the switch was flipped. And, and this is already where the realism just escapes through the window and we are in the fantasy world of, of different weird things, of, of travels, of, of fantasy stories happening. And a similar thing was done in 2009 in Sprite. So again, we have an earthquake and there is a building and this building gets transported into a new world. Yay! Uh, the, the plot is different, that manga is much longer, there is also other themes, but the earthquake is not the main character, it's again something that, oh, it starts, we should protect ourselves, there will be something happening and it will be bad afterwards, but the earthquake is not the main star of the event. So, uh, in that way, the earthquakes are basically used as this kind of plot device in mangas. So they do not have to be the main thing, but that might be also that not all earthquakes in Japan are earthquakes or of 8.0 and not all of them have Fukushima exploding. A lot of them are just shaking everything, everybody just like, stay calm, it will go past, and then we just pick up the teacups and everything. Now, off to the next topic, the pandemics and epidemics and the viruses. And I start with the mangas, as before, that concentrate on viruses as the main thing in the title. And it cannot be just a virus. It has to be a new virus, never seen before. It has to be deadly and aggressive. And it has to be worse than Ebola. It's like the comparison is always there. And, and what I found is also very, very typical. Uh, this is the class of viruses that turn humans into bloody fountains. Uh, which I would also like to underline, there is also a class of viruses that turn humans into mutants uh, and a class of viruses that turn humans into zombies. And I decided to leave that for a different panel. Uh, we, we have a limited time today, so we're going to talk about the human fountains. So the first human fountain is from Emerging. Uh, Emerging has two volumes. And it follows the story of a hospital where the first victim arrives of a man that just sprays blood if you just poke a hole in him. And this follows the doctors in the hospital as, as this, this guy was in Shinjuku, spraying blood on everybody there. So the, the spread of the pandemic is like exactly fast. The first symptoms are flu. Everybody thinks at the beginning, ah, just a few days and I'm going to be fine. Nope. And the characters here very fast get on the fact that this is a very dangerous virus. We have to be very, very careful and we're going to have some panic and everybody going really crazy. And a very similar title is The Infected Island from 2008. This is only one volume but it's much more dark and heavy and here there is it, it's a different type of manga in, in that way, but it still follows the same premise. We are in the hospital, there are doctors, and there's a lot of victims of a virus that turns people into... Well, they drip a bit more than are a fountain, but it's still like coughing and vomiting from time to time. Uh, so both of these titles uh, have doctors as protagonists, and the place is hospital in Japan. And they kind of stick to it. The sickness doesn't leave Japan, it just stays there. And the enemy, the virus, has to be aggressive, has to be unknown. There is no cure, it has to be found. And the social background, we can see the changes in the society at the beginning as, well, there is some kind of virus, and then, oh my god, it spreads for air. And, and in both those mangas, especially the second one, there is a note from the author that it was done with studies 
on the topic, trying to be as close to how the real thing would play out. Now, the differences between them, in, in emerging, we actually have, th this is a bit more up a bit manga, and it's trying to have this darkness and bring out the things from people, but there is a lot of people that get saved in this manga. While in Infected Island, there is this death count that goes into millions at some point, and you just look at it, it's like, oh my gosh, is Japan still alive, or are we going to have no anime or anything for the first next few decades or something? Um, also, in, in Emerging, there is this kind of different point, because the doctors are the ones working on the cure. In Infected Island, most of the time, the doctors are just trying to control the situation and relieve people in the horrible, horrible situation when the cure is being developed by the government and pharmaceutical companies. Uh, so people are basically just, the, the doctors are just like, you have no power here. You cannot do most of the things you would like to do, and you just have to watch and you have to make very difficult decisions when there is not enough equipment and there is people dying on the streets as well. Um, also, in emerging, there is a very interesting thing is that um, they actually have this one politician slash health minister guy who just says like, mm, we're going to announce that we have it under control. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's a bad idea. In, in Infected Island, the government is trying a bit more harder, even though there is still this kind of uh, trying to, to cheat a bit. Uh, in the situation, uh, but but still, there is both mangas are trying to do the same topic, but they're doing it slightly at a different angle, and that makes it interesting. Now let's go. What happens when the virus goes across the globe and infects everyone? And actually, this is when viruses are the point, but they are not exactly. Uh, doing the thing. This is when we again throw the realism out of the window and we go into the adventure land with all the fantastic things happening. Uh, science can just forget about itself. And, and this is actually the, the a class of viruses that uh, turn humans into clay figures, uh, which I found as a common theme. And the first uh, clay figurine collection is in King of Thorns. And this manga has an anime which is a movie, so five volumes made into a movie, well... The manga is good, but the movie is not, so... Yeah, they, they kind of had to cut a lot out of the manga, because five volumes, you know, you just let's kill a few characters earlier, so we don't have to tell their story of their lives and so on. Uh, so this basically went more or less like this. But the manga is uh, also very good. The, Starting point is an island, there is this um, organization that decides to rescue some people from Medusa, the virus, and put them into cold sleep. They will wake up with the, when the world has the cure. What they didn't uh, do, and they woke up when the island turned into monster-infested hell. And the manga goes basically on this, that the characters have these bracelets on their hands showing the progress of the infection, killing them, and the protagonists escaping from all the mazes and monsters and people dying one by one and so on, this kind of happy setting. Um, alternatively, we have another manga in which, uh, this is much longer manga, it's, it's like or around 20 volumes, the other one was five, and here humans manage to first get the virus, this is the closure virus, turns people into clay figures, and here humans decided to fight back and fought back with technology. And so this lady has all this rig. She got infected and then they just fixed her up. And she's living finally on her pillows happily. And uh, the plot here is much bigger. Um, Hiroki Endo likes to go around the globe with his stories. So it goes to South America, it goes to Asia, it goes to other countries, and the characters are doing all the other things, and then there is this virus popping in and out from time to time, and it's very action-packed manga. And so, so the virus isn't really killing the whole population right away, 
and we're not in the hospitals all the time, we're also on the streets with all the shooting and stuff. Also very bloody. And what's common for both of this is that the first chapter and the first beginning, we are what we think is a safe island, which turns a bit less safe, and we have a deadly virus, but there is something there. It's not a regular virus, the deadliness is not the whole point, there is something more to that, and the plot just goes and tries to find out the truth about everything. Both of those mangas are heavily twisted on the plot side, I'm not going to explain that, that would really spoil you the enjoyment of both of them. And protagonists are this kind of characters that most of them aren't like straight cut good or bad, there is a lot of this kind of dirt that gets taken out of their past and thrown at them during the story. Uh, and we have a lot of this kind of society with, with, with the virus changing the, the story, changing the governments, especially in Eden. We have completely different countries and, and governments and everything. So, so the virus really impacts the situation. And, and this is, of course, heavy fantasy. We have no idea what kind of viruses that would be, how they would work, but we can still imagine that and put that in manga. Yes. And both of these are heavily on gore, guts, guts, guns. If you can't stomach those things, do not maybe try to approach those titles, but they're pretty good. And this is the, the kind of quality of natural disasters that changes everything forever. There is no coming back. The, the society and, and the world will be different in ways that, that you just have to read to know. Now, the difference is that with, with The King of Thorns, it's five volumes. And, and this could actually have a follow-up story of, of going outside of the island, doing all the things around the world, but basically the the story ends with this kind of, um, well, someone folks imagine all the rest. And the meanwhile, Eden has this fight back and then long struggle. And, well, it, it is the plot wise, it's a very complete title here. So it's just very long. Now, in King of Thorn, Normal is redefined, everything is kind of like, well, this is how we're going to live from now on. And in Eden, they are trying still hard to, to have some kind of normal. It's just in Eden, we are following a path of pretty criminal people going through criminal underworlds and similar. So maybe their normal is a bit different as well. Um, and yes, King of Thorns is pretty twisted, but it's short. And Eden, it goes and goes, and the, the whole things change, and then there is this few years gap in it. So yeah, uh, and and because King of Thrones is short, so we have a short number of protagonists. Eden has like a long list of people that just go through it. Of course, a few has to die, so you know, you don't have to remember all the names. Now let's go to the next topic, and this is what happens when the nature evolves and humans get left behind and have to fight it to the best of their abilities. Of course, the, the viruses from, from the previous, there, there is some evolution happening there, but I decided to leave them in the virus section. So with evolution, uh, we're going to see again two titles, and we'll see what those titles do to change the game. Green Worlds is a manga in which people one day experience some weird explosion and when they exit the metro they see basically this. The whole world has been invaded by plants and plant-like and insect-like things. This is one of the series in mangas where you just have these giant insects and you're wondering how the hell is that biologically possible, but in this it is. And we have all those wonderful... You can see here this, this bell. Uh, this is those, those are those plants that eat, eat insects. When they get big, they eat humans. Uh, and this is actually also a recurring theme, so if you have a nature going haywire, 
those will have to be human sized. Just obligatory. And in here we have basically, you, you can still see the, the buildings and everything, so the landscape, it hasn't really changed that much, but people have to live underground, away from the plants and trying not to get monsters in there. And they are fighting against all those things. The survival thing here and, and fighting is quite big. So all the guns and everything and humans getting eaten by various monsters. Now the next one is Seven Seeds. And the Seven Seeds has a bit different premises that people uh, one day wake up from cold sleep and they are in totally different place. Uh, this I will have to spoil you, but that's something that's done in the first few chapters, so it doesn't, the manga is pretty long, so it doesn't really affect the quality of the reading of most of it. Uh, this is the few years into the future after a big cataclysm occurs on Earth and those humans were put as part of a government program into sleep and basically, you know, one day you are eating a dinner with your family, the next day you wake up and then you have these big insects running after you. Again, big insects. And, and then you almost get eaten by plants and so on. And this is a bit different because here we have people who are basically kind of thrown into it and then they have to fight, give it all and survive in the very hostile environment. And in both cases we have this plunged into danger, getting anywhere without a gun, a knife and some kind of basic survival setup is super dangerous and highly not recommended. And the plot in both cases is that you just have these pockets of humanity left here, there, some nomads trying to scourge some, some resources. Basically, you just can forget about dominance of humans on the planet. Now it's the giant beetles and the human-eating plants. So the, the whole thing there is, is just overturned. And, and the story concentrates on that extreme survival that for every bottle of water you just have to fight your way for a jungle. And there is actually in both of these mangas this kind of token guy who just cannot forget his girlfriend. Even though all the signs everywhere just are saying that forget it, she's dead, she's not coming back. He will be remembering her every at least five chapters. With, with a nice picture. Uh, especially the green worlds, they have color there from time to time. And here we see also this kind of thing that is survival of the fittest, but also this, the, the struggle for everything that civilization basically makes readily available is, is quite uh, visible and is quite strong. So the the tragedy of, of changing makes humans uh, adapt to the new situation, but it's a really big struggle and they have to fight for everything. And there isn't really much space left for other things. It's basically running from one monster, trying to find water, trying to find food, and thinking about your loved ones are, is, is this kind of an afterthought when, when a monster almost ate you. So it's like, good job. And, and the difference here between the two stories, as I already mentioned, is that in Green World, uh, the protagonists uh, emerge from the underground, and, and this is a moment thing. This is, this is just fantastic how coordinated the attack of plants was on the human kingdom. And it's, it's not explained, I tried to read as much as I could find and, and it's just story follows trying to just survive. They're not even trying to find out what happened, why is this like this, uh, is this even normal, no, but you still cannot even spare a thought of, of why the world is different. The, the only thought is how do I live to the next day? In Seven Seeds, the protagonists wake up from long cryogenic sleep and they have a person explain to them what the hell is going on 
Uh, but but in, while in Green Worlds, the landscape is the same, everybody just goes there and sees like, well, that is Japan, I'm, I'm just going to sh shoot myself or something. In Seven Seeds, the people drastically see that, that the, the landscape is so different, they are holding on to the possibility that this is not Japan, and they will try all the explanation that when this cannot be Earth, we're just finding the next airport and getting back home. No way we're going to stay here forever. And, and this drive to not accept the situation is, is this kind of very long stage in the beginning of the manga. It's basically traveling, trying to find a way to survive a little bit, but then to find the door that just gets you out of here. Uh, and, and this is something that's, that is pretty, pretty noticeable, the, the denial of the reality you're in, because otherwise it would just crush you. Now, to also compare that the, the Green Worlds is, is doing this kind of a sudden and, well, whoever had the strength survives and, and lives on, uh, and and the, everybody else just dies, and, and the dying is also this kind of accidental and you stepped wrong. But in Seven Seeds, it's, it's a government project, so there are the hand-picked people, which hand-picking sometimes you're starting to wonder about, maybe it was a lottery or something. Uh, the people are picked with the government project and let out in, in different times, in different groups. It's, there, there is this kind of intent of it, but the things that happen to them are kind of, in, in a way, random as well, so we have people dying in various ways. But Seven Seeds is, is mostly survival, they are not trying to really fight strongly, fight their way through, as much as escape and just set it on fire and run away. Uh, meanwhile, in Green Walls, they stuck on the guns and leave the underground and we're gonna get through it and we're gonna kill them all. Good luck. Yes, uh, so coming back again and wondering all those manga disasters, why do we put a natural disaster in a manga? Yes, it builds character. Uh, but also, it is one of those mangas that hold a really big emotional bullet. And it's one of those types that go for really strong catharsis. Even though it's kind of hard to imagine yourself in that situation, the manga goes very strong in trying to describe it for you. To, to set the setting for you and you can kind of live through it with the characters. Of course, the manga titles that are a bit more fantastic are more difficult, but quite a few of those are trying to put this extra push into making it as close to reality as possible. And these scenarios of natural disasters are a way of also trying to play with the normalcy of the regular day, trying to twist it around, redefine it, and, and this is a very extreme addition of makeovers because you can change everything. A lot of titles uh, change basically the, the area, the, the characters change in them as well. Uh, the premise changes. Some of the titles try to go in, in a lot of length to, to twist the plot around. Um, some of the titles just stick to that uh, situation of, of constantly changing drastic environments that the characters are almost getting used to this tragic situation and then, whoops, an earthquake extra, one more monster that you've never experienced or expected, whoops, somebody loses a leg, good luck. Now, the enemy in most of these mangas, which is kind of noticeable, is not another human. It's the nature, it's the virus. Other humans are very often just these 
um, stepping stone or a stepping stone you can trip over, but still the goal isn't to fight like, somebody who's really evil and trying to put these negative things on top of you. Uh, in the natural disasters, in, in this way, we just have stupid people most of the time, but there isn't like this truly evil person. Uh, so, so the manga doesn't really go into that. But there is a lot of this kind of uh, stages where people break, and there is evil fl flowing out of that situation. People who basically, without the harness of society and the police around the corner, stop, uh, start control, stop controlling themselves, but start committing heinous crimes. The earthquake mangas are especially big on that. There were the, the ones that try to go into realism, uh, and even the ones that go into fantasy, there is always some kind of crime mixed into it by people who wouldn't do it in the regular society because they would go to jail. And this makes almost every of these mangas have this kind of flavor of why the, the people do that. It's just incomprehensible sometimes. And even in some mangas we have these protagonists who are that close to grey. Of course the manga tries to explain the reasons more for why they did something or show that they're struggling with themselves, with the evil that they commit. But a lot of the time it's, it's like, oh my gosh. And quite a few of this, it's, it's kind of half on half. Half of these titles uh, changes the normal and the adventure just continues on after the manga is over. So a, a lot of titles in, in Japan are this kind of protagonist trying to get back to the normal and the normal is in many cases restored. So they get to have back their school life, their work life, their regular and ordinary uh, schedule of every day afterwards. The buildings that were destroyed are rebuilt, uh, especially in, in this kind of earthquake uh, situations. But when we enter very often the, the fantasy manga, which has the natural disaster, quite often the, the normal changes and the world is never the same again. And, and it just uh, stabilizes in, in some different way. In, in somewhere else. Uh, but most of these events, and, and this is like, I would be expecting that's, that's the average, that most people wouldn't want for, to go through any of that. So the manga is uh, just get, taking you for a ride, and it's cool, but yes, it's good that I'm sitting in my own home, in my own chair, and with the warm bath waiting for me before bed. And in those titles, it, it's a really nice adventure to, to follow. And that natural disaster is something that... It, it's a stage and it sets a, a very, very important element in the manga for, for, for drawing the plot the way it, uh, it come, goes. And, of course, Outside of the natural disasters, there are also man-made disasters. So there is a lot of manga where there is a nuclear war uh, hitting, or there is a virus that was engineered by humans, or there are dinosaurs coming back because somebody was playing in the lab. And there is a lot of these titles, so I was actually going through and, and trying to sort them out and throw them out of the window. And uh, in here I have the list of all the titles, uh, so the first one was the 55 ways to protect my girlfriend, which is the very realistic earthquake story. And, and this is uh, five volumes about, it's complete, and it's very good manga, but it's also very realistic and very close to, to what could happen. Uh, and this is a very big disaster, but on the scale of course of Japan. Then we have Seven Seeds, which is an ongoing adventure of survival in the horrible land of the future where the nature wants to kill everyone and the government just hopes that humanity survives. 
Uh, then we have Drifting Classroom, which is the by far oldest title here. Um, it's short. I would say this is one of the sli slightly mediocre ones, uh, but it shows the the earthquake as uh, an entrance to the new world very nicely. Green Worlds uh, by Osawa Yulska is also a, a, one of those survival mangas and it's pretty good and it also has this nature going crazy on everyone and it, it has this kind of um, it, it goes into overdrive in a few moments uh, it has this oh my gosh this is horrible it cannot get any worse and then you have a giant monster that is like oh my gosh it really did get worse and then it's an endless world and this is this is another older manga but it's really high quality um, and uh, is is really good mangaka when it comes to the quality of the world work but also to the plot the complexity and the multinational setting so so it's uh, one of those very global titles emerging a two volume manga about a virus set in the hospital this is one of those a, a bit more colorful uh, so it has a bit more flavor to it than an ordinary gritty one would be which is the infected island which is only one volume uh, so you can see that when you have only one volume you just get dark and it ends and in emerging they have a bit more you know space to do ups and downs and king of thorns um, very good manga, maybe not so good anime based on that, uh, highly recommend. And it's also this kind of, um, yes, we have a virus, but this monster will eat me right now and not in a few weeks like the virus, so I will have to fight the monster first. You have to set your priorities, right? And, and then the story gets twisted around and, and, and the ending is like a brainwash, so very interesting. And then we have Sprite, uh, which is still ongoing as far as I know, and it's also getting long. Interesting, yes, and it also has this, this recurring earthquakes happening to do this kind of uh, changes in environment, not as the main thing, but as a sound thing. And anime, Tokyo Magnitude, also very realistic, very close to it, how an earthquake of very high magnitude in Tokyo itself would look like. And with children, so a bit, a bit more mild, but it's still trying very hard to introduce to this kind of reality. And yes, I recommend like 90% of those. Very good stuff. There is, of course, more titles that explore those themes, uh, but this was just the pick for this panel. Thank you very much. Thank you.